Welcome to Mining Now. We are filming these episodes from PDAC. We have a very interesting company on. Uh, we have two guests. We have their operations manager, Corey McCarthy, and we have their inventor and innovation manager, Michael Deneen. And this is Zero Trip Innovations. Uh, so I last night before filming, I went down the rabbit hole uh, to learn about the company, and I got a whole bunch of questions answered about how, uh, how drilling is done um, when you need to change directions. So... Um, they're going to even expand on it more. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Great to have Zero Trip Innovations on. Thank you. Great to be here. Um, the name, just quickly, Corey, uh, what's the, the Zero Trip Innovations? Where does the name come from? So it comes from taking less trips in and out of the borehole. So the the original wedging products available on the market have multiple trips in and out of the borehole. So you got to pull the drill string out in and out several times so our wedge runs in front of the drill bit so you don't have to trip in and out of the hole mm. uh, to install it so that's where the name zero trip came from before we get into to zero trip um and i've got lots of questions i've got a lot of questions about the company but um i just want to get into both of your backgrounds a little bit um cory let's start with you uh what's your background how did you get into not not just into zero trip but into the drilling industry uh, so my family business is uh, Priority Drilling, uh, which is the biggest uh, drilling contractor in the UK and Ireland and uh, in Western Europe. So I've basically been working uh, for that company since I left college. And uh, I actually was originally working as an offsider with Mick and he was the driller when uh, he came up with this idea. So my... My background is in drilling, in drilling contracting. So that that's uh, how I've segued into this. Where we've invented this product, and uh, now we're commercializing it and selling it on the on the market. Wow! So yeah. zero, zero Trip basically uh, markets a product that was developed in priority drilling. Yeah, when I was I, doing the I, I originally started way back in the eighties as a helper and progressed to a driller. And in the mid nineties, basically we started directional drilling in Tara mines. Tara mines insisted on priority drilling to adapt and learn new things about getting more accurate information down boreholes. So in the mid nineties, actually March 95, we started uh, directional drilling. And basically I was more of a victim rather than a volunteer to take on the task of trying to uh, introduce this uh, method of more accurate drilling. So basically what it's, what it's all about is staying in the same position, drilling multiple boreholes off one motor hole. We've got a video and I actually want to, I, if you can, you won't be actually watching the video on the screen, but just we'll try to match it up um, with best we can later. I want to walk through, but just, just quickly for some context. So when did... Uh, Corey, can you just confirm again? So, when did priority drilling um, get involved uh, with, with Michael? You you were working with him, and then real, sort of realized there was an opportunity, or how did that relationship evolve? Well, Michael here was working as a driller for priority drilling. Oh, okay. And I, I was working as his offsider when he came up with this idea. So that's why we say that we're different to these other directional companies because we're drillers that are designing products for drillers so we have first-hand experience of what's happening in a borehole and what changes what needs to be adapted because the original equipment that came over from the states was not really suitable for the ground conditions we were drilling mm. so it was extremely uh uh stressful at the very beginning so we needed to adapt and change equipment we're still adapting and changing the product to the ground conditions we're encountering even to this very day uh we're making modifications to adapt to different ground conditions so could it's you, evolving the whole time yeah could you yeah, just give us some uh, well, once we had the oh. the product ready oh. when was it 2015 2016 yeah well uh, basically i came up with this thing in the back of a, a cereal box back in 2012 and nobody believed me and they all thought i was mad you know there's no way you're only going wasting money and wasting time yeah. so i actually went off in a bit of a 
bit of a voyage on my own first to find people that would mm. a machine shop or whatever to go help me out to develop this. So in about 2015, when I got a bit of airtime from priority drilling, we uh, first tested the wedge in a few boreholes, you know. So that was a complete learning curve. But the big advantage was we had the boreholes to test it out right. and to try out the piece of equipment, you know, Yeah. because day one, like this was never uh, a done deal at the very start. There was a lot of trial and error. So yeah, I, I, I suppose the initial troubles I had was we I, I designed this to go down a borehole. I didn't design it to come up a borehole. But in the drilling industry, you basically uh, have to cover all angles. And <laughs> that was a bit of a testing time. But uh, we've developed it over the years. Yeah. I want there's yeah, two and, things. Oh, sorry. sorry go ahead, Corey. Once we had the the wedge working well in the operations of priority drilling, we began to see the commercial value of it and, and that we should be able to sell it to other drilling companies. Right. Let's talk about our heavy industry world tour brought to you by Savannah Equipment, supplying mining equipment worldwide. And Corporate Traveler Canada, helping companies travel the globe simpler, faster, easier. We are heading to events across North America and Australia and filming episodes on location. Email us at info at crownsman.com to be part of Crownsman's Heavy Industry World Tour. Solving the complexities of operational efficiency, safety and compliance, and asset management in mining can be a significant headache. Madison Technologies understands these challenges, and with over three decades of industrial communications experience, they're not just a supplier, but a transformative partner in digitization. Madison Technologies accelerates the digital journey of their clients, and together with global technology vendors, they deliver practical real-world solutions. Visit madison.tech to discover how they can help you unlock future potential with Mining 4.0 solutions. Orica Digital Solutions seamlessly connects customers' physical and digital worlds so they can readily understand and optimize operations at every step of the value chain, from exploration to processing. Whether deployed individually or as a whole, Orica Digital Solutions technologies deliver intelligence for open cut and underground mines to make more precise and faster decisions. With a complete, timely, and accurate picture, operations can adapt to improve safety, drive productivity, reduce costs, and environmental impacts. To learn more about Orica Digital Solutions, visit orica.com forward slash digital solutions today. Yeah, this I I want. There's two things I want to get back to. It was the the development. I actually want to hear a little bit of the story of it, um, and I also want to talk a little bit about ground conditions, uh, which is there's a case study link that I want to cover in that. Uh, but before we do that, um, Michael, can you just can you just walk us through? Uh, and we'll, again, we'll bring up this video. Can you just walk us through what the the uh, tri zero trip wedge actually does like and how did like uh, install it how it works everything sort of in detail the wedge i was using originally back in the mid 90s was known as a halro wedge so it is basically you had to go down insert a plug so you had to lower all your rods down the borehole insert the plug plug the hole come back up with all your rods take them all out uh, this could take a whole shift depending on what depth you're in uh, next shift, you go down with a timber. It was a special American softwood timber so that it expands in the hole. Mm -hmm. And basically, you come back up and you go down with a steel wedge. Uh, it's a pretty basic tool. Uh, it's like a, a spade. And when you orientate it to wherever you want to go, what direction, you insert it into the timber and you had some brass rabbits holding your dropping bar onto the wedge and you shear those rabbits by pushing down on the timber. And that was okay, wedge set. Then back up the hole you come again with your drill rods and you put on your core barrel. And your core barrel is a piece of equipment that drills off the wedge into a new borehole. So you establish a new borehole at wherever you set this wedge at. So it is very labor intensive you could be four, five shifts doing this. But the most frustrating thing was, uh, I suppose in, in the late 90s, I took over as foreman uh, back in the project in Ireland. And basically we, uh, we had issues with sensitive ground conditions. When you're tripping rods up and down a borehole where the ground is very unstable, 
what can happen when you lower your timber plug in the borehole and come back up. You can destabilize the borehole and when you're going back down with your steel anchor or spade, you can find a lot of cave sitting in top of your piece of wood. And next thing, your spade doesn't insert that well into the wood. It has no anchoring system to keep the wedge against the back wall. When I say the back wall, this long, this is about four and a half meters long, this tapered piece of steel. Mm, And the biggest issue in drilling, because I'm a driller, is that you you go to change your bit and when you go back down uh, after replacing your drill bit, you go back down next in the wedge is out across the hole and you can't get past it. Mm. So umpteen issues used to happen with the Halro wedge. Grand, if ground conditions are good, no problem. But if ground conditions are sensitive, absolute nightmare, can be a nightmare. So that's where the zero trip wedge came about. But there was two, let me go back a small bit further. Back in the 60s, there was two systems basically uh, competing against each other. You had the Bort Longyear, which had a spike for pulling a tube. Now, drillers will know this. The general public will say, what the hell am I talking about? But you had a spike, a spear, and that was the system that, you know, took over. But there was another system called the quad latch a Christian quad latch system. And this Christian quad latch system was the key to me to developing the zero trip wedge because it allowed me to put an orientation receiver for a camera inside a quad latch. And I could then find where my position was, my orientation in the borehole. Now, when I designed this originally and brought it to the market, people can't understand how the heck did I know where the wedge was facing, all right? Because when you go set traditional wedges, everybody was going down the borehole with non-magnetic chrome uh, pipes. So you knew you'd normally take six meters of a non-magnetic rod down behind your wedge so that you could drop in your camera and see where the borehole is facing what angle where you want to go. So everybody was doing that. That was the industry norm. But I said, you're going down, taking a survey of information you know already. You've already completed the borehole. You've taken a a survey from the bottom to the top, and you've decided where you want to kick off uh, to the the way where you want to put the wedge. So you know the magnetic azimuth, or you know the azimuth, you know the incline, you know all that information. So from directional drilling, in my in my experience, you have two options on a camera. You have magnetic north, and you have what's known as GR angle. GR angle is grid rotation. So its starting point of measurement is the high side of the hole, right? So you still with me? Yeah. So the high side of the high side of the hole is always equal to the azimuth of the hole, right? So magnetic north starts from magnetic north. Now the two will end up in the same area uh, readings, but they start from two different points. One starts from magnetic north. One starts from the high side of the hole, which is equal to the azimuth of the hole. So I was able to determine where the wedge was facing with steel rods in the hole. And that was the big difference. I could de- determine where the wedge was without having non-magnetic rods in the hole. And I discovered that from having directional drilling experience over the years. So that was the first key point of doing that. And all competitors, put in your anchors, put in your plugs, they all mechanically installed a piece of equipment by rotating and tightening an anchor in the hole. I came up with something different. I decided to drill through the wedge Mm. and put in an anchoring system based on hydraulic force so that water, water's in the borehole. So I used water to set the anchors of this wedge, which is a way more reliable uh, and I can apply massive force on it. So that was the key difference to this wedge to any other wedge. I was actually using uh, a connection mechanism which was drilled straight through the wedge back into the core barrel. I replaced my tube 
with a dropping kit. And once I install that wedge, I can take out that dropping kit with the wire line and replace it with my tube and start drilling straight away. I can quite easily, uh, at a thousand meters, install a wedge and have core in the box in eight hours. No problem. Normally, this could take you four or five shifts uh, and you're not guaranteed. The other key design, because of my experience with uh, the problems of other wedges, I designed an anchor. It was known as the fifth anchor. And this would be your typical anchor section here. So we'd have your four anchors at the base of the of the of the anchoring section, but put a fifth anchor further up. And the idea of the fifth anchor is that this is in line with the tapered section of a wedge. So without breaking any cameras, <laughs> this is a 3D printed version of a wedge. And this guy here, we'll put him together for you. And now this anchor section here mm -hmm. is in line with the tapered section. Right. Right. And we put it down in two pieces. So for ease of putting things together, guys on the drill rigs, we put it down in two pieces. The original wedge was come in one piece, which was very awkward and difficult to manhandle. Now, this guy, one second here, I'll move this about. The key components here is you have your fifth anchor here. There's a key here that locks the two pieces together. Mm -hmm. And this is at the back. This is at the front. And basically, this fifth anchor here pushes the wedge against the back wall, as yeah. I call here, at the back of the wedge. Right, yeah. And it keeps your wedge against the back wall while you're drilling past the wind, keeps it no, there the whole no time. No matter ground and conditions. That's a key, that is a massive difference to any other product in the market there is that fifth anchor. Brookville Equipment Corporation is a world-class American manufacturer specializing in underground mining and tunneling equipment for transportation of materials and personnel. Producing rail-mounted and rubber tire equipment, Brookville's vehicles are designed to meet the demanding needs of their customers' unique applications. Brookville also offers contract manufacturing solutions for your already engineered designs while fabricating it into a small component or a final product. You can see their full list of capabilities at brookvillecorp.com or you can contact them at 814-849-2000. Hey mining enthusiasts, registration for CIM Connect 2024 Vancouver from May 12th to 15th is now open. Last year this convention had over 6,800 participants from 60 countries with 1,796 delegates, 702 booths and 320 presentations. Secure your spot and register now at convention.cim.org. CIM Connect 2024, where quality and innovation define the experience. With Fender Dunlop, you know you are getting the best conveyor belting in the market. That's because they ensure the integrity of their conveyor belting by monitoring each step of the manufacturing process in their North American facilities. Focused attention is given to each belting order to guarantee that they produce a belt that will assist the customer in reducing operation costs, maximizing uptime, and improving revenue. Visit FenderDunlopAmericas.com to learn more. Michael, just, just it, and that's especially true for ground conditions, Right, because ground conditions would, would be a problem with the wedge yes, moving, right? Exactly. Yeah. Because if you when you're tripping up and down, is that you can quite easily get cave or anything at the back of the wedge. Yeah. So if the wedge moves out just a little uh any bit, a little bit at all, and any bit of uh, um material can fall in behind the wedge and next thing you have a problem. As whereas this wedge, once it's set day one, that's it. It's back against the back wall and there's no coming out from that, you know. Right. So uh, that's an example there. We have, over the years, developed different types of anchors for different ground conditions. Okay. So we're ad adapting and adjusting the whole time. We're now setting these wedges in the hardest rock you can imagine up in, the, up in Scandinavia. Uh, basically, where it was taught originally couldn't be done. We're drilling off in hardest of granites. Wow. We're heat treating the wedges now. 
Nobody heat treats wedges. We heat treat wedges now that we can drill off in the hardest formations possible. And everybody would stay a million miles away from a wedge because they could never install them in extreme hard rock conditions. But we're doing that now to this day. So we're modifying and adapting the whole time, all because we have the experience of using them ourselves in our own drilling division. We, we have that experience. Yeah. It we was quite a lot of these ourselves. You know, we, we've installed these now to depths of 17, 1800 meters. We supply them down to Africa. There's a couple of clients down in Africa. One particular client has installed uh, a zero trip wedge at 2980 meters. That's wow. our record at the moment. They've surpassed us. And this was to troubleshoot a borehole they got into trouble with where they had left some equipment in the hole, created an obstacle, and they needed to get past it. And wow. it was put in at 2,980 metres, which is a fair achievement. That's an achievement. Uh, to, to do that, and to do that in a very short space of time. And that saves thousands. Time is money on a drill site. You know, so yeah. it's very important. Yeah, it's it's absolutely amazing. Like like I said, I went down the rabbit hole yesterday. Ex you explaining it, there's a lot that I missed um, trying to sort of understand it. But I wanted to ask, um, Corey, the, the business development side of taking this to market, what has that been like? I'm always kind of fascinated when you have an – I mean – like Mike was saying, this was clearly a problem um, yeah. that drillers had run into for years. Um, I think you said the first wedges were in the 60s, Michael? Yeah, wedges have been there way back uh, yeah. a long time, you know. So um, you had this yeah, issue. Yeah, like for... they, they never really developed for a long time, right. 80s, 90s. It was just, you know, a troubleshooting product. Yeah. But because of directional drilling, that's where the wedge really took off because people wanted more accurate information. So they wanted to make more use of the existing boreholes they have drilled. So the wedge came more and more into play. And in a project we had back in Ireland, uh, the borehole started getting deeper and deeper the whole time. And the client was more interested in more accurate information the whole time, you know? Yeah. So we, we were adapting and responding to the client's needs. So okay. for Corey, uh, in yeah, in regards to the business development of the product, yeah, it has been quite challenging because these previous products uh, have been unreliable, and you know, the wedging has kind of been given a bad name. Yeah, so wedging is kind of perceived as risky mm -hmm. in the market. It, it, it would be, and it takes a long time to change a mindset, uh, something that's uh, very cheap. Uh, your typical uh, um, steel wedge was quite cheap, but it was very laborsome to and costly to install. Yeah. So it's very hard to get away from that mindset because a lot of the time the contractors paid by time. So they'll pay by time and the, the, the product itself is cheap. This is not a cheap product to make. We make this in Ireland ourselves because quality is everything. We just didn't want to get the name ruined mm. by too many manufacturers coming in because it's a very precise piece of equipment. There's a lot of machining in it, but it does the job. And that's the most important thing. It does the job. So how to then when you're taking it to market and that's, you know, it's, it's a good, you know, once you paint that picture of what this product is and how it changes, I mean, it, it's pretty clear. You've done testing, there's case studies. Um, yeah. But what are, what some of the feedback you're getting from the, from the industry, Corey? Like even, even just some of those questions, you know, you, when you're, uh, I was actually just reading this morning about changing people's minds or uh, trying to, uh, <laughs> the, if, if someone's yeah. set in a way to try, what it's like to try to get them to do it differently. Um, yeah, you just got, you got to keep educating people. You yeah. got to keep telling the story of the product, and uh, you you got to just keep your marketing going, keep your social media going, telling everyone about what you're doing. And the more people see what you know, uh, the more you're working, the more clients you're taking on, gives people more confidence to to work with you and and to give you the time to to explore. See, yeah. see, there's a lot of substitute products in the in the market. Like there's there's stuff that almost does the same stuff, 
Right. Uh, so so it's like you're competing with yeah lots of different kind of products and services. But like it's good in that uh, it's drilling contractors that are using this, and it's hard initially to get them to come on board. But once they come on board, yeah. they never turn back. It's one of those. And things. This, yeah. is, this is the key. And we have we have the biggest drilling contractors in the world using this product. Yeah. Use that's... this. In, in, and we're in several different continents. Yeah. That's my uh, question um, is about is about the onboarding is the training for it. I was going through a sheet yeah. of yours and I saw I, I mean, I, I saw you even doing like VR training. Um how do you what is the process for anybody watching this and they they go okay i want to learn a little bit more about this so you you know they do some education they go on your website and what have you but then it's time to like kind of take it a step further what is the actual onboarding um of and getting the support look like for you know the first time user of the system yeah usually you want to find the guy at the drilling contractor that does the directional drilling or the wedging and he has to kind of champion the product in mm. in that company for you, and uh, so like Corey has an, an awful lot of videos, uh, demos on how the product is installed, and then you have a clown like me that'll answer a phone at two or three o'clock in the morning yeah. when they're down in Peru or down in Mexico or in, in Russia, out in uh, Uzbekistan, uh, looking for the technical support. All right, okay, something is not right here. We're not right. sure of and. This clown here is at the end of a phone to um, answer it at any time, you know. So yeah, it's it's it's, it's been a, an amazing journey with a lot of people, you know. And technology today has changed a lot. Like once you have like four G or five G on site, they can basically video call us. We can check the setups. We can make sure everything's right. okay, hmm. and then they can put it down the hole. And, and uh, so, like like Mick was saying, we've been on calls. Yeah, setting, setting these wedges for people all over the world, and, yeah. and e even people that can't even speak our language. Like we, we've we've in Peru, we're we're setting them, you know, perfecto. Do you remember yeah. in Russia? <laughs> we've been setting them there too. Yeah, but like um, the drilling industry and a lot of the drilling companies, um, they're all very proud of their own uh, experience and how uh, how. They know better than everyone else. And basically they'll take off in their own mission and say, right, okay, I can do this or whatever. And next thing something is not sure and they come back, mm. the, the technical support is there to help and experience mm. because I'm a driller myself. So it, I designed this um, purely for drilling. So that's for drillers, so that it's very simple mm. to install and not too complicated to drill past and it's very simple it's a simple piece of equipment once you know uh, you use it and we have multiple uh, end users now that will never go back they'll always come to us and that you know is great but our biggest problem I suppose up to now was capacity trying to deal with the, the demand for it so we're expanding the whole time we have a very good manufacturer on board with us and he has made uh, massive uh, investments and to cater for the demand for him, you know. And it's great. It's, you know, we're a little backwater in Ireland. So we produce a product that's going all over the world. We're in South America, the Americas, Russia, Africa, uh, gone down to Australia. So it's it's traveling far afield, you know, at this stage, you know, this this product, you know. So it's good. Are it's you good. starting to get more people reach? You know, because you know, you mentioned marketing. A lot of that is reaching out. Are you get, starting to get more yeah. people now saying, "Hey, I heard about this"? Because it's it's a big industry and a and a very small industry. I'm sure you, you know, exactly, Michael, I'm sure you exactly. know all over the yeah. world. Um, you know, are they starting to yeah. sort of talk a little bit? Yeah, l l most anyone that's doing wedging, they've approached us and they've had a good look at our technology. So they go and they do their cost analysis and they see whether it's a, if it's good for a good fit for them or not. But, uh, you know, if, if you're a major drilling company and you're running multiple rigs and you're doing deep hole setups with directional drilling, like you really should be stocking this product uh, in your yard or at your sites. And uh, not, uh, our tool is the best tool in the market for a borehole recovery. So if you get your rod stuck or you drill into a void, uh, 
you know, we can get you drilling in six to eight hours again. But the most the most important thing where a lot of companies get caught out is that they don't stock. Mm. And usually it's a problem. And next thing is, what do we do? They have a problem right. down the borehole. We need a wedge. Mm. And because they don't stock them, it costs them twice as much, three times as much in waiting time or whatever. So that's a big issue that people need to kind of change the mindset. We're actually drilling up in Scandinavia and we're drilling PQ and HQ up there. But we will ship a PQ and HQ wedges on site, regardless whether they're needed or not, because it takes so long to get there. Right. So it, it is just complete backup support. You need to be organized. You need to be structured. And it, it's so important. So a, it's a get out of trouble piece of equipment as well and you get out of trouble quick right but like people look at the cost initially and say oh no it's, it's too expensive or whatever but downtime is the big cost on yeah, the building yeah, you know you can't that. afford to have crews yeah. down you know and uh mishaps i'll be polite about them we we'll call them mishaps happen in drilling all the time happens down boreholes things get stuck things get cut obstacles come in the way you know so it does happen you know it's something that so I all them. just quickly touch just circle back to because i saw it in the case studies um and i i think we've kind of touched on it so i don't know if we have to go into specific case studies um but in one of the case studies it, in what you mentioned earlier was the different uh the basically the different layers that they're going through and the different in, um now i'm butchering it i'll let you fix it um but basically different, the, different uh, ground conditions that you're, different you're, ground you're conditions, talking about yes um and but you're also so that's going from soft to hard all these different ground conditions yeah, you're I, going into yeah so it fixes that problem but it also can you just touch on a little bit you said in like i think you mentioned in granite it also fixes that problem. And I was just trying to distinguish yeah. why it yeah. fixes well, yeah. both of them. Right. I, I, I'll explain that to you. Your, your, your normal wedge is a mild steel. For, for manufacturing purposes, it's mild steel. Mm. So it is good in your sedimentaries, your limestones and all, all those type of rocks because they're a, generally a soft rock. Right. Okay. So it can, you, your drill bit can drill off. It'll, you know, take some shavings off the wedge or whatever, but you can drill off successfully quite easily into a new borehole. But when you're dealing in extreme hard granites, mm. that's a different ball game because the rock is so hard. It's so hard in comparison to your mild steel is that you will tend to cut into your steel and run into problems. And if you cut into your wedge too much, you can deform the wedge in the hole. You can deform the steel. So next thing, it can become an obstacle in the hole. But we have case hardened these wedges now to deal with those conditions. To give you a small bit of history, if you look at these guys, these are the different anchors we use, right? And this is the initially for soft rock. These guys are for more harder rock. They're steel tipped. But this is oil and gas grade steel. These are really expensive guys. But these guys bury themselves into extreme hard granite. So we can adapt and change these anchors as we please to the different ground conditions uh, with the wedges. So it's so important that you're able to adapt and change to different ground conditions. Most people won't be aware that you can actually get uh, different grades of steel to deal with the different formations you're drilling. Mm. But we we adapt and do that, and it's all out of experience. We're learning we're learning the hard way in priority drilling. <laughs> we're dealing with um, first hand experience down a borehole. Now that's all the difference. Is that the actual that. You are the drillers, um, and we are the drillers, and that's I mean, that experience is vital to us, you know, to adapt a product, you know, because you can be selling a product out the door and not know what kind of issues you do uh, drillers do encounter down boreholes, you know. Um, and and Corey, I just want to leave just with a couple quick questions about again the business development side. Um, yes, one is uh, manufacturing and availability. You, you said about people should stock it. Um, is it available for distribution, you know, globally? Is it readily available? If, you know, what kind of lead times on it, if there are lead times? 
Yeah, so we have a global supply chain. So we use some uh, s distributors in, in certain continents. Uh, so if you want a wedge, we can make one available to you uh, instantly and we can air freight it to you. So there are wedges available at any time and there's no real lead time. Yeah, yeah. Is the, is the, um, I just want to quickly ask, it's sort of the last question is just the, the timing seems right for this. Again, another one of the case studies I was reading through last night said that one of the main advantages was like you were in, you were drilling in an agriculture area or the client was, I'm not sure if it was priority or another company, but they were drilling in a high agriculture area. Um, and this allowed you to, to do the exploration and the drilling, um, without as much disruption without as much moving the drill the from the original yeah we, we have some very funny stories yeah. associated with that and clients because in ireland you're never too far away from a dwelling house mm. um it's fairly well populated out the country and when you're dealing with farmers in ireland where land is so precious uh you have to be very sensitive to their needs right and and the client as well would uh, loves to have a good working relationship and it's all PR in the mining industry, you know, because you, you have so, so many issues there. So we have set up and boreholes and we, one particular story way back in the, uh, in the late nineties, where one particular farmer didn't want us on their land and the, the client um, asked us to set up a drill right next to the boundary fence. And I remember well, we, we, we drove or we, we drilled the first uh, vertical borehole and there wasn't much mineral in it, not a whole lot. And he's, he, the head geologist said to me, oh, we, we, we'll steer out in this particular direction and ju just see under your man's land because he's not He's not very nice. He's not very cooperative. So basically we went out underneath his land and I remember well about eight degrees off vertical. And next thing we hit a massive vein of ore. And uh, next thing the head geologist said to me, oh God, I uh, wasn't expecting this. Uh, I think that's only an Arab band, but we'll go again. And we we did a, a daughter hole, granddaughter hole, great granddaughter hole. So we went the whole way out to 40 degrees, about 800 meters wow. out into his land. And it got better and better the whole way out. And the farmer was quite old at the time and they couldn't figure out how the heck we were such bad drillers. The drill was in the same spot for two years and he couldn't figure out what the heck was going on with the drill. How was it taking him so long to drill a hole? <laughs> in actual fact, we had multiple holes drilled all out underneath the property. Hundreds of and meters down. What's that? Hundreds of meters down and across. A hundred no. meters down and away out, and we did a complete circumference. We'd come back up into the motor hole, change the azimuth slightly, off down we go, do a, a sequence of daughter, granddaughter, great granddaughter holes off out in that direction, and it was amazing the results. And we, yeah, you know, we've had, we've had, believe it, we've had up on fifty wedges installed in some boreholes with some clients. We've had drill rigs sitting in the same spot for nearly ten years, well, and that's much? that's a record in Tara yeah. Mines in Ireland. I have it's, to it's ask, crazy. I have to ask, it's Michael, crazy. though, how much faster would have that project been <laughs> if you had had the the wedge you're using now? But but like going yeah. back to going back to that story of sitting up on the border or on the, the boundary of that particular farm, it might never have been found mm -hmm. because the initial mother hole that was down straight there was very little, nothing in it. We could have quite easily moved off and say, oh, we can't get access to that land or whatever. Yeah. The farmer is a bit uh, troublesome or whatever. We could have moved off. And only for wedging and directional drilling, yeah. it was amazing what was found, you know? Right. So it, 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 it's a good story. And it's it, it's back in Ireland, uh, one of the mines in Ireland, you know? So uh, we have first-hand experience of all that, you know? Yeah, I just I was just wondering, though, that project particular, how if you were to take the Zero Trip wedge and mm. do that same project that you were doing in the 90s, would it be... 80% quicker, 30%? What, what we, we did, uh, we had an audit client and they did an analysis at the end of the year. And we had about 14 rigs on site wedging. 
And over the year, comparison to what was happening previous, we saved them 180 days in wedging alone. 180 days. It was crazy when we actually got the facts at the end of the year in comparison to what it took to install the traditional wedge. Can you imagine 180 days? And the big issue that Priority Drilling has found is that we have a lot less incidents and accidents where your people getting injury, hand injuries or, you know, tripping and falling, tripping rods in and out of the hole. And the big issue is wear and tear on equipment. That is a hidden cost that a lot of companies don't see is the actual saving they're making. And we're finding it big time in the saving uh, on machinery. The fitters, that's the first thing they come up with. They don't have the same issues wear and tear on equipment, you know, and that's a big cost. And it's a hidden cost that a lot of companies don't see in the practices they're currently doing without the zero chip wedge, you know. Uh, I'm glad you touched on the safety and the the equipment wear. Um, I mean, gentlemen, I, I'm going to have to leave it there. This, when you've got a topic like this, it doesn't feel, you, you know, people sometimes hear that they're going to do an interview for 40 minutes and they go, how are we going to fill it? And then at about the 38 minute mark, they realize um, they need about 38 more minutes. Um, so I'm sorry to end it there, um, but because there's a lot, I mean, we could talk about the safety, we could talk about the wear and tear, we could use other case studies. I mean, we could be doing three more episodes with you. Um, I yeah. certainly hope you both come back on. There's lots more to talk about, um, but we're going to have mm -hmm. to leave it there. Thank you very much. Hope we do it again. Thank, thank you, so you for your time. Thank Not you for your time. Much appreciated. Thank you. Uh, and thank you, everybody, for watching. Kate, there's the Zero Trip website. It's zero zero dash trip dot com. That's going to be in the description. You should go check that out. They also have, um, I think they have. It's not in front of me. I think they have a YouTube channel. Let me double check that. Yes, yes, do. we do. We're going to drop that. I'm going to drop that link in there as well. So go check out their YouTube. It gives you a really, um, anything we couldn't get in this episode, it'll give you a really good visual. This is obviously an important thing for the drilling industry, so we want to share it. Um, if you've used it, let us know, let them know, and we'll also have connections to both guests. Um, uh, uh, if they have LinkedIn, we'll put a connect their link to them as well. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We hope to have Zero Trip back on the show. It was great to have them, great to learn, and we will see you on the next episode of Mining Now.